a quiet day in Texas, but I want to take you all the way back to Monday. We had some thunderstorms that went up in the San Antonio area. This is them developing around Castorville and moving up into the northwest part of the city. Here is some spectacular footage taken just west of Hondo, Texas. You can see the impressive back shear with these cumulonimbus clouds. This is looking from the southwest. The anvils being carried off on the other side. There was some large hail reports up to one and a half inches with those storms. Well, here's the situation we have going on today. Northerly component is in effect through the Great Plains, except for the far western regions where a little bit of return flow is setting up. But you can see that cold air coming south. We've got 60s and 70s in the central plains, and we're expecting actually a pretty cold night in the Ozarks, 40s and even some 30s in that region. And up to the north looks like another outbreak on the way. And this is kind of interesting. If you go up far to the north and look up in the Beaufort Sea, we've got this strong high pressure area. Now, we're not sure if that's 1040 millibars. This is being implied by the analysis field, but we're certainly going to take a look because we've got north winds across parts of the Canadian high Arctic and a ridge extending down into Saskatchewan. So that could mean a little bit more cold air coming south into the U.S. We're not going to see a polar outbreak or anything like that, but that could continue the Hudson Bay vortex pattern. 1031 millibars there being indicated by the GFS, and that whole thing is the ridge. Let's see if that comes south. Not really. It's being held in check by the very fast progressive flow across the central U.S., but up in Canada, it is going to remain somewhat cool over the next week. And out there in Europe, a cold pattern does prevail. Evening temperatures in the 40s. Getting into the middle of Maine, you'd have to take a coat with you in places like London, Frankfurt, and Warsaw. Now, as you probably noticed on that surface chart, we've got a fresh outbreak of polar air coming south. The leading edge runs from about Champaign, Illinois, down to about Batesville, Arkansas, through Little Rock, and into the Dallas-Fort Worth area. That's the leading edge at this hour. That's tied into a Bear Clinic low in the Chicago area where it's 48 degrees at O'Hare. And we also do have a little bit of moisture. The problem is you can see that the winds around Atlanta, Huntsville, Tupelo, they're all out of the north. We've had a previous outbreak of cool air come south over the past couple days, and that's cleared out the moisture. So you can see the dew points are mostly in the 40s. We've only got this narrow wedge of 50s up through Memphis and all the way up into Paducah, and that's allowing for a few high base thunderstorms near that front, especially in this region right here. And there's those thunderstorms fast moving, heading towards Evansville through Paducah, and later on they should be in the Lexington and Nashville area. There is a slight risk for that region. And that appears to be centered mostly on the area of strongest heating. It looks like maybe they're looking for diminished intensities as it moves eastward later in the afternoon as we lose heating and instability starts falling off. There's what the radar looks like as we record this. This is the Memphis area. A few thunderstorms in that region. That's the tail end. And these are low top thunderstorms up to about 25,000. Just kind of a loose outflow driven cluster extending up the length of that boundary. There's the Fort Campbell radar showing some of these storms all the way up into southern Indiana. And there's the Evansville radar showing a secondary line developing out there from Danesville, Indiana, down through Effingham and out there towards the area east of St. Louis. There's the southwestern U.S. deserts. Looks very quiet. Some cumulus and towering cumulus up there in the mountains of western New Mexico in the higher elevations. And off the west coast, the marine layer with some stratus. And that's certainly a warm season type pattern. We tend to get a lot of that stratus along the coast and it works its way into the valleys 
and backs off as we get the heating in places like Los Angeles and San Diego. Looking pretty good in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. The moisture is scarce, but we are getting some lift in the boundary layer as that front comes southward through Arkansas into Texas. Just not enough moisture and instability in Oklahoma and Texas to get storms going in that region. No problems in Florida, though. This has been kind of a dumping ground for these polar outbreaks. The fronts come south, and they stall out there, providing many boundaries for the moisture and heat to interact with. Now, this here, that could be a front. It could be an outflow boundary. Haven't looked in too much depth, but in any case, they are going to be similar as far as their effects go, and you can see that they are generating thunderstorms as they move south. Some pretty good storms there around Vero Beach. And here out west you can see debris. That's convective debris from thunderstorm activity further out west over the Gulf. The mid-Atlantic under westerly flow. We saw yesterday that area of thunderstorms moving eastward. And that's associated with some cold air that's been riding out over Virginia and North Carolina. And further out east you can see transverse bands in that stratocumulus field. This is indicating quite a bit of stability in the low or mid levels. And here's what the soundings look like in that area. It is a fairly deep boundary layer, but it's pretty heavily capped there up at 700 millibars. Most of these clouds forming at about that level, which means these clouds are going to be high stratocumulus or low out cumulus. And a quick check of the cloud conditions shows that these are up near six to 8,000 feet. So it's kind of interesting that they're getting a pattern a little bit like the Great Plains. However, above the cap, those lapse rates are terrible. So we're not going to get any thunderstorms or anything like that going, even though there's plenty of straight line shear and a somewhat unstable boundary layer. Classic cold air advection pattern in the Midwest up to Minneapolis. You can see the northwesterly flow there. Lots of large convective cumulus elements. So if you're flying in that region, it would be kind of bumpy up to about 10 to 15,000 feet. Temperatures struggling to rise up into the 50s through that region. But the air mass is quite dry, and that dry air transporting southward will eventually spread into the Great Plains and that means it's going to be hard to get the tropical return moisture going in Texas, at least for a couple of days. Now, we are looking at a bit of possible chase weather, maybe late this weekend. It is May, and as Tim Marshall always says, when it's May, you chase. Checking out the patterns, there comes that big ridge. This is kind of locked in with that Canadian system. The ridge axis running from Manitoba down through Arkansas. So the only hope of getting return flow is going to be out in this region. We're looking at tomorrow morning here. So starting to get a little bit of return flow in Texas, but it's still very early. There's Friday night. Now we're starting to get some deep return flow, and the models were not really indicating it very strongly a couple days ago, but they are breaking out some storms tomorrow night out there in West Texas and the Oklahoma Panhandle. These are probably going to be kind of high based, but we will get some better return flow overnight. As you can see here, not very much developing except one little speck there near Abilene. I suspect the dry line is set up, but we are probably capped. Yeah, that's definitely capping problems when you're talking about 16 Celsius up at 850. However, with this cyclogenesis up there in Kansas, looks like we've got a wave that's going to be moving eastward overnight. And yeah, there it goes, taking the storm out there towards the Midwest. And you can see the flow veering in Texas and Arkansas, which means the better moisture is going to be found out there in Chainsaw Chase Country. So by max heating, yeah, we do get some storms, but those are going to be mostly in Little Rock down towards Shreveport. 
it's going to be kind of hard to get convection going out in Dallas. The soundings showing some moisture issues right off the surface. You can see 50s up there above two to 3,000 feet, so that will be a problem. However, there could be some potential along this inverted trough there. Then going into Monday, the front sinks a little bit further south, and the model there going for some potential around Waco back towards Brownwood. That's a pretty good pressure gradient there. So it looks like a lot of cold air coming in, and yeah, look at Denver bringing in snow on May 10th. That's pretty bizarre. Anyway, that is going to bring the front down into Texas, so it's going to be kind of a unsettled pattern through much of the week, as we pointed out. A little bit of clearing there towards the end. And let's see if things recharge after that. Maybe around the 16th for the following weekend. But man, look at that strong cold air advection. So we are just not done with that Hudson Bay vortex pattern. Fortunately, it looks like a lot of that's going to be heading towards the northeast U.S., but man, we just cannot shut the big Canadian refrigerator down. And there it is. You can see the 19th bringing in another cold air outbreak with 540 decameters thicknesses down into Des Moines and Madison. So what we're getting from that is mid-May will favor Texas and Oklahoma and maybe by late in the month will we see activity becoming widespread into Kansas, Colorado, and Nebraska. Hope you have a great evening. Take care and we will see you for the Friday edition. Bye-bye.